14 of the fantasy baseball season. And what a year it's been so far. Quick season. A lot of players have broken out that we didn't expect to have a good season. But they have. But here we go to start off week 14. A few hitters I've looked at on the waiver wire this week. The first guy is Willie Adamas of the Milwaukee Brewers. So when the Tampa Bay Rays about a month ago traded Adamas, I spoke about it on this channel. And I didn't expect Adamas to do much in Milwaukee. But obviously, I was wrong. And right now, he's one of the hottest players in all of fantasy baseball on the season, 13 home runs, 44 RBIs, 40 runs scored, three stolen bases, a 247 batting average, and a 320 on base in the last couple weeks here for Adamas. Four home runs, 11 RBIs, a stolen base, 10 runs scored, a 319 batting average, and a 448 on base. And we'll go a little deeper in the stats ever since he got traded to the Brewers, six homers in the last month, 20 RBIs, 19 runs scored, a 301 average, and a 371 on base. So right here, Adamus, we knew he was a top prospect a few seasons ago here with the Tampa Bay Rays, but it just never panned out for whatever reason. We saw flashes from him, but a change of scenery has really taken his play to the next level here is Adamus, and he's been added already in 6% of fantasy leagues in the last few days here and he's only available in 52 percent and right now at a weak shortstop position in fantasy baseball this is a perfect time to go out there and get a dom it's the last few games for him june 29th versus the cubs 0 for 3 with a run june 30th versus the cubs 1 for 3 a home of four rbis and three runs scored july 1st of pittsburgh 1 for 5 july 2nd of pittsburgh 3 for 3 a homer and rbi and two runs scored july 3rd of pittsburgh 1 for 4 with two runs and then the 4th of July yesterday, 1 for 3 here for Adamas. So Adamas and the Brewers, they've been red hot except yesterday losing, winning 11 in a row before that. And now they got a three-game set here with the New York Mets. And we'll see what Adamas does. But right now, he's a top pickup this week. The second guy is Jace Peterson, his teammate of the Milwaukee Brewers. So Peterson, we haven't heard his name in a while. His biggest stack of were with the Atlanta Braves a few seasons ago. And this guy right now, he's a hot wave of wire pickup as well, added in 14% of fantasy leagues over the last few weeks. And this guy's very versatile. First, second, third, and outfield, he qualifies in fantasy baseball. So on the season for him, three home runs, 19 RBIs, 18 runs scored, four stolen bases, 267 batting average, and a 385 on base. And ever since he's been starting, with Colton Wong back on the injured list, in the last couple weeks, a homer, 11 RBIs, two stolen bases, 10 runs scored, a 424 batting average, and a 524 run base. So right now, he's out of this world. He's hitting everything here with Peterson, and he was ranked third in the last couple weeks in fantasy baseball. And he's definitely worth a pickup here. So the last couple games for him, June 30th versus the Cubs, two for four with a run and three RBIs. July 1st at Pittsburgh, one for three with two runs and a rib. July 2nd at Pittsburgh, 1 for 4 with a homer and an RBI. July 3rd at Pittsburgh, 2 for 5 with 4 RBIs and a stolen base. And then yesterday at Pittsburgh, he only pinched hit in that one and went 0 for 1. So right now, Peterson, he's playing great baseball. And I know probably once Colton Wong comes back, they're going to bench this guy. But with his versatility, I think he could find a way getting into that line of 5, 6 days a week if he keeps his hot streak going. And right now... He's still available in 73% of fantasy leagues, and this is a time to pick him up. This is Jake Fraley of the Seattle Mariners. So Fraley, he was on the list a couple weeks ago, a guy who came up from the minors for Jerry Kelnick, who was struggling their top prospect, and he's been playing pretty good baseball on the season. Seven home runs, 22 RBIs, seven stolen bases, 17 runs scored, a 263 batting average, and a great 437 on base here for Fraley. And the last couple weeks for him, he's been on a hot streak. Three home runs, six RBIs, two stolen bases, four runs scored, a 321 batting average, and a 429 on base. So right now, he's playing every day. And he was a guy, he was on and off the last couple weeks, but now he's back on, and I think he's gotten over that little injury that cost him a few games at towards the end of June here is fairly. So the last couple games for him, June 29th at Toronto, one for four. July 1st at Toronto, 2 for 3 with a homer and an RBI. July 2nd versus Texas, 2 for 3 with a homer, 2 RBIs and 2 runs. July 3rd versus Texas, 0 for 3 with an RBI. 
and July 4th versus Texas 1 for 3. So right here, Fraley, he's getting on base. He's showing some power. And right now, I'm in a few leagues, and he's owned in all of them is Fraley. And he's still available, though, somehow in 83% of fantasy leagues. So this is a perfect time to get him. The Mariners is obviously, they're going to play a lot of young guys. And right now, Fraley, he's getting the everyday opportunity. So if you need some outfield help and a guy who shows some pop and could steal some bases... He's worth a pickup this week. The next hit is Brandon Nimmo of the New York Mets. And Nimmo, he finally came off the injured list a few days ago before the start of this weekend series with the New York Yankees. And Nimmo here, this Mets offense is actually getting things going the last couple games since Nimmo returned. And I guess he's the engine to this offense here. So on the season for Nimmo, one home run, 11 RBIs, 10 runs scored, two stolen bases, a 325 batting average. And a 419 on base. So Nemo, he missed about two months with his injury. And he's only got 80 at bats on the season. But now, since he returned so far, the last three games, 5 for 14, 3 RBIs, 3 runs scored, a 357 average, and a 357 on base. So the only surprising stat in those numbers to me is Nemo didn't draw a walk because we know he's a batter that. He's patient, he takes a lot of pitches, and he draws a lot of walks. But so far, that's the only thing he hasn't done is Nimmo. But he's been added in 3% of fantasy leagues right now is Nimmo. Still available, though, in 71%. So the last games he came back for, July 3rd at the Yankees, 3 for 6 with 2 RBIs. And then yesterday in a day-night doubleheader at the Yankees, 2 for 8 with a run in 3 RBIs. So Nimmo here, he's still getting on base, he's still getting hits. And if you need runs and some on-base percentage and a decent batting average, I don't think Nimmo's a bad pickup this week here for fantasy owners. The next hitter, I look to add is Andrew Vaughn of the Chicago White Sox. So Vaughn, obviously, a lot of hype he had in the offseason, being a guy who pretty much got drafted and went to the major leagues here in a year. So Vaughn on the season here, 8 home runs, 22 RBIs, a stolen base, 34 runs scored, a 245 batting average, and a 313 on base. So Vaughn, like I mentioned, he was a hot pickup early in the year. Then he pretty much didn't do anything for fantasy owners or the White Sox. But now he's been pretty respectable the last couple weeks. 2 home runs, 5 RBIs, 6 runs scored, a 324 batting average, and a 342 on base. So the only thing with him is... His on base to batting average hasn't been a great number over the last couple weeks, and he's a free swinger, is Vaughn. He's a young hitter, no doubt about it, but right now I think he's worth a decent pickup. He's on a decent Chicago White Sox team. He's batting fifth or sixth in the lineup most days here for this team, and right now he also qualifies at first and outfield, so that's pretty decent versatility as well. The last few games for him June 29th versus Minnesota, two for three with a run. June 30th versus Minnesota, 2 for 3, a home at 3 RBIs, 2 runs scored. July 1st versus Minnesota, 2 for 3 with a run and a rib. July 2nd at Detroit, 2 for 4 with a homer, an RBI, and 2 runs scored. July 3rd at Detroit, 1 for 4. And July 4th at Detroit, 1 for 5. So he's shown some power. He's showing the batting average. I know the last two games he really hasn't done much as one. But I think he's a decent guy to have towards the end of your bench or your last utility spot on your roster and he's also available in 85% of fantasy leagues so I would give him an ad this week the next hit is Joey Votto of the Cincinnati Reds so it's surprising to me that Votto has fantasy value here this season we thought his career was pretty much over and he was a guy that wasn't going to produce for the Reds of fantasy owners but this season it's been mediocre numbers 11 home runs 37 RBIs 24 runs scored a stolen base a 258 batting average and a 336 on base, but the last couple of weeks it's been vintage Votto, three home runs, seven RBIs, six runs scored, a 333 batting average, and a 375 on base. So right now he's getting on base, he's showing some power, and he's hitting for average, which we've known Votto throughout his long career to do this hit for average, score a lot of runs, take pitches, get on base, and right now he's doing that. And batting fourth or fifth year for this red team. So the last couple games for him. June 29th versus San Diego. Two for four with a run. June 30th versus San Diego. Two for three. A homer and RBI. Two runs scored. July 1st. 0 for five versus San Diego. July 2nd versus the Cubs. One for two with two RBIs. July 3rd versus the Cubs. Two for two. A homer and RBI and two runs scored. 
and yesterday on the fourth, the one for four here was Votto. So Votto, he's available right now in 72% of fantasy leagues, and he definitely could go out there and help fantasy owners. Like I mentioned, with batting average, on base, and he's even showing some power as well. So if you could use a first baseman or utility hitter, I think Votto's a good hitter. The next hit is Kiki Hernandez of the Boston Red Sox. So right here, Hernandez, the super utility man. He was a good and hot commodity in the offseason for teams to sign. And obviously, the Red Sox got him. He's been a big piece of this first place Red Sox team this season. That's really surprised a lot of people around the major leagues. So Hernandez, he's been added in 8% of fantasy leagues this week. And this season, 10 home runs, 28 RBIs, 40 runs scored, a stolen base, 241 batting average, and a 313 on base percentage. So right now, he's pretty much getting an everyday opportunity here with the Red Sox team. And he's making the most of his opportunity in the last couple weeks for him. Four home runs, 10 RBIs, six runs scored, a 277 batting average, and a 379 on base percentage. So Hernandez right now still available in 71% of fantasy leagues, but you can't go wrong with adding him here. He qualifies at second shortstop and outfield the last couple games here for Hernandez. June 29th versus Kansas City, two for four with a run and an RBI. June 30th versus Kansas City, 0 for 3. July 1st versus the Royals, 1 for 3 with a homer and an RBI. July 2nd in Oakland, 1 for 4 with an RBI. July 3rd at Oakland, 2 for 4, 2 runs, a homer, 2 RBIs. And then yesterday versus Oakland, 1 for 4 in that one. So right here, he's leading off for the Red Sox. He's scoring a decent amount of runs, and he's showing some surprising power as well is Kiki Hernandez, and right now he definitely was a big pickup in the offseason for the Red Sox, and he's also going to be a big pickup, I think, this week on the wire, and he's a guy to definitely go out there and get the next hit is his teammate, Hunter Renfro of the Boston Red Sox. So Hunter Renfro, he's been pretty decent as well as a good pickup here on the free agent list for the Red Sox in the offseason. On the season, 12 home runs, 44 RBIs, 44 runs scored, a 267 batting average, and a 322 on base. So right here, those are great numbers, especially for Renfro in the batting average category. Last season, he hit 156, and the season before that, in the low 200s, and the last couple weeks for Renfro, four home runs, 13 RBIs, nine runs scored, 318 batting average, and a 353 on base. So right now, Renfro, he's getting hits. He's still showing the power, which we know he has, even though he only has 12 home runs this season surprisingly but this Red Sox team they got a lot of hitters this season that are hitting for average putting the ball in play not just swinging for the fences and this is a main reason why I think they're in first place as well and Renfro he's definitely taken that approach this season so the last few games for him June 28th versus the Royals two for four with two home runs three RBIs June 29th versus the Royals one for three with an RBI June 30th versus the Royals one for four with a homer and two RBIs. July 1st versus the Royals, one for four with three runs. July 2nd at Oakland, one for four. July 3rd at Oakland, 0 for four with an RBI. And yesterday he had the day off with Renfro. So right now he's hitting for average. He's showing some power. And he's mostly an ad in deeper leagues, but he's still available in 48% of fantasy leagues. Here is Renfro. The next hitter is Eric Haas. Uh, the Detroit Tigers. So Haas, he was a recommended ad a few weeks ago, and then he totally fell off the map. So right now, he's got great versatility at catcher and outfield, and he just started getting that outfield eligibility over the last few weeks. So if Haas could start playing the outfield every day and obviously qualifies a catcher, that's a big get for fantasy owners because obviously your catch is only playing four or five times a week here for your team. So on the season for Haas, 11 home runs. 22 RBIs, 22 runs scored, a 258 batting average, and a 310 on base. So the main good thing here about Haas is his power. He's a big, powerful catcher that's going to hit a lot of home runs if he gets the everyday opportunity. In the last couple weeks for Haas, three home runs, eight RBIs, a stolen base, six runs scored, a 375 batting average, and a 423 on base. So right now, he pretty much hasn't been in the lineup each and every day, but he's starting to get back in there the last three out of four ball games, and he's definitely been producing for this horrible Detroit Tiger team. So the last few games here for Haas, 
June 26 versus Houston, one for six with a stolen base. Then he sat out the 27th, 28th, 29th was a rain delay. June 30th at Cleveland, one for three with three runs, a homer, and an RBI. July 2nd, he sat out. July 3rd versus the White Sox, his breakout game, three for four, two home runs, six RBIs. And then yesterday on the 4th versus the White Sox, two for four with a run and an RBI. So right now, Haas, he's helping this team win the last four out of five ball games here. And they might keep him in the lineup. So right now, I think he's worth an ad. And especially with that catcher eligibility here, with a guy playing the outfield for the most part, they're trying to find an everyday spot here for Haas. And hopefully, for his sake, he gets in there. And if he is in there every day, he's definitely a hot pickup. And he's still available right now, Haas, in 83% of fantasy leagues. I know hit I've looked at on waivers this week, Scavin Sheets of the Chicago White Sox. So Sheets, he came up a couple weeks ago. And right now, he's been producing pretty well here. One of their top prospects in the White Sox system. Two home runs, eight RBIs, three runs scored, a 318 batting average, and a 360 on base in 22 at-bats so far. So Sheets, he made his debut June 29th here versus the Minnesota Twins. And he's obviously a first baseman as well with Vaughn moving DH or outfield and also Jose Abreu playing some DH as well. So the White Sox, they got a lot of young hitters. They were an up and coming team, no doubt about it, and probably going to win that AL Central this season. And Gavin Sheets, I think he's worth a decent add. So the first few games for Sheets here, June 29th, two for four with a run and two RBIs. June 30th, Versus Minnesota, two for four, a homer, two RBIs in a run. July 1st versus Minnesota, one for three with a rib. July 2nd at Detroit, one for four with a homer, three RBIs. July 3rd at Detroit, 0 for three. And July 4th, one for four at Detroit. So right now, Sheets, he's been batting second the last three games. When he came up, he was batting seventh. So right now, this White Sox team believes in him. They're batting him up there in the lineup. And he's a good lefty hitter here is Sheets, and he's definitely worth an ad this week, and he's available in 92% of fantasy leagues, so that's a few hitties I looked at on the waiver wire here in week 14 of the fantasy baseball season.